I'll put you to spot. Uh, Rubina, can you hear me? You yes. can hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the last time when I spoke to you all, we were talking about John chapter 13. And John chapter 13 is a very special time in which the Lord has his last supper. And during the last supper, a miracle happened in which he spoke to everyone, but actually his message is meant just for one person, and that is uh, Judas. He used the washing of the feet as an example to show that all of us should humble ourselves, and we, no matter what happened, we should humble ourselves and do the things that we need to do for the Lord. And, and there also... We see the new commandment that the Lord has given to us, whereby he says, you know, love one another as I have loved you. Now, many a times when we read the Bible, there are portions of God's word where they will tell us about God, reminding us of the things that he has done for us, telling us how, how much he loves us. And even the song we sang today, it tells us about his love, how he will stay with us, how he will take care of us, and many, many things. But today, and the last time, it talks about the direction that God wants us to do, the example he set for us, and his ability to forgive because he loved us. Even Judas is carried he loved. But today, we're going to do a bit different. We're going to find out what can we do in order that we can continue to glorify and honor the Lord. And this is where we go into chapter 14. And, and here, you will see very simple things that are taking place. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this simple thing that we are talking about? Mm. You see, Christ at the Last Supper in 13 and now in 14, and another one or two more chapters. Christ know, Christ know, his hour is coming. So because his hour is coming, he doesn't have much time with all of us. And the people he has, he must be able to say certain things before he leaves. And all of us know, this, this is the word that we all, I always use. Mm, valediction. Now, valediction is a time whereby when a, a person, uh, when, for example, you know, you go to college, you go to school, at the end of that three years, five years, or whatever it is that's required for you to graduate, the principal or mm, the, the dean of the school will give a talk in order, they will congratulate the people who are graduating. And it is more what I would say, a parting words for the student or saying farewell to the student because they were not, they were likely they will not meet again and if they do you'll be maybe a few years later in the case of Christ he knows he's living too and he knows that uh, the disciples will not be seeing him so in his parting word or his farewell what, what he will want to say in a farewell will be spoken at this time whereby we call it <clears throat> the valediction. The valediction is a very moving and touching time because it's just like you're all right, if you have a family back home and you know that you're going to go to Malaysia or Singapore to work or other places, Puching or that, to work, you're going to leave your family, your loved ones for a while. It could be a year, it could be two years, or it could even be longer than that. 
So there are a few things that you will say, especially when you're parents, you will say to your children. In valediction, always listen to the word of the people who are talking to you. It's just like even at a time when someone is going to die. The reason why I do not want to use uh, a word to describe that Christ is going to die because he's not going to die. Although he died at the cross, he rise again and he's coming back. So valediction would be a better word whereby you say a parting word to the person that you love, people that you care, and ultimately knowing that there's a possibility you're going to meet again. And in the case of Christ, we are going, he is going to meet us again. And during such time itself, the words that we're going to use will be very touching. That means we're going to say something that's very important because we know that whatever we want to say has to be that done now because after that, we have no opportunity to say those words. So as you leave your children, for those who are married, you will say things, asking them to take care of themselves. They must do certain things, make sure they do they study hard, you know, and uh, be responsible, listen to the grandma, the grandfather, or listen to the husband, and all the nice things, and all the important things will be said. So when a person gives a valediction, always remember, listen very carefully because those words are very important. And usually at a valediction or a person who is kind of a very sick and he knows that he's dying, he will say one thing very important. He will always talk about love. He will try to tell the children or the people around him how much he, he or she loves them. Some people may not use the word love, but through the conversation, you will know that the person loves the people around before he leaves. And that's where the valediction is taking place. So 90% of them will talk about love. Now let us just see in chapter 14 itself, what is the valediction that Christ has given to us? And this is what he says. I will just use three alphabet. Okay. The alphabet A, B, and C. Just three things. But upon this three things itself, is going to help us in our ministry for Him. Because many a times, we want to do things for the Lord, but we fail to do it, or we are distracted, or we lose track of it ultimately. We kind of uh, fizzle out, you know. After doing it for a short while, we just fizzle out. We got no more energy. We got no more focus to do it. So here, in chapter 14 itself, Christ talks about three simple things. A, B, C. Now, what is A? Anybody want to make a guess? What is Christ telling us under the alphabet A? What is important for us to know? Just make a guess, anyone. If you make a guess, either right or wrong, then I'll continue. If not, I'll keep waiting. Action. <laughs> Sorry? Action. Do you say action? Is it a verb or a noun or a pronoun? Uh, okay. No, it can be. Okay. It's either a verb or a noun. Acknowledge. I'm Everybody can... Beginning. Sorry? A. Beginning. Yes, it starts with A. A, yeah. Beginning starting with A. So it's easy, right? You all go to school. The first thing you learn is A, B, C, A for Apple. Right? So in what Christ teaching us, he also used A, B, C. So A for what? Accept. I'll say that again. I can't hear you. Accept. Accept, okay. I will tell all the A lila. Acknowledge, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The first A Christ is talking about is this one. Affection. Affection is love. You'll notice that there I write 9 plus 1. In that chapter itself, chapter 14, he mentioned love 9 times and one more time. And I use the word plus one because he shows the negative 
of what love, if you don't have love, what will happen, okay? And these are the references in chapter 14. Now, in verse 15, he make, he make mention one time. In verse 23, he mentioned the word love two times. 28, one time, and it goes on. Verse 24 is in red, you notice, right? And that's the one that he talks about opposite. Now, all the others, he talk about love. But in verse 24, he said, if you do not love me, that means you do not. The word not is there. That means you do not love me. You have no love for me. So it's a negative. Why the rest is positive. So Christ said, you know, if you love me, if you have affection for me, this is what is going to happen in our life. Affection, how you express love. How do you express love for Christ? Is by keeping his commandments. If you have love, if you love me, you will keep my commandment, Christ said. And in these three verses, when you go into John chapter 14, verse 15, 20, 31, 21 and 31, you'll find him saying that, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. And then in verse 23, he also used the same thing actually, but instead of my commandment now, he said, you'll keep my words. That means in other words, you don't only tell, I mean, you will not only keep what Christ tell you to do as a commandment, but he will say things. And along the things that he say, he may not classify under commandment, but it's a teaching, it's an advice, it's something that we should take note of. Okay? It's just like someone come to you, you know, and say, oh, uh, Sally, you know, uh, I always like to eat apple. Now, it's not a commandment that you must give him apple or give her apple. But by, by that person saying, I like to eat apples, you know that if there's anything you want to buy for him you or her, you buy apple because he likes apple. So when you have affection for Christ, you will, and you, when you want to express it in love, you will keep his commandment and you will keep his word. That means, in other words, whatever he say, you remember. And it's very important why uh, affection and expressing love, uh, why I say it is important. Just remember this, uh, affection. Now, then, always remember that affection comes from where? The answer is there already. Heart. Yeah. Heart. Yeah. We love someone. Always from the heart, right? Some of you, you know, right? When you're next to that guy who you love very much, your heart pound, pound very fast, like boom, 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 like that. Uh, it comes from the heart. So always remember, from the heart, you can express your love for Christ. And then the next thing is, after learning this, the next one, B. What is B? <laughs> These are the three words, you know, he say a number of times in uh, John 14. Believe. Yeah, well done. That is what I'm looking for. And that is what is indicated that believe. It started off with two belief. And believe is mentioned six times in chapter 14. After that, I'll put the link for you and you will understand it, okay? And these are, okay. these are the six times that we mentioned. Okay, in verse 10, one time. In verse uh, two, 1, there are two times. Believe, believe, believe. And when a person believes, what it means is this. You see, even in John 3.15 and John 3.16, two very important verses that brought us to Christ, the word believe is inside there. If you believe in Him, you have eternal life. If you believe in Him, you have everlasting life. It is indicated there. So the word believe is a very strong word that all of us Christians must remember. If you do not believe in him, then you find that eternal life and, eter and everlasting life is not ours. So that is why belief is important. But in John 14, he's talking to people who already have eternal life 
and everlasting life. So he wants them to believe in something else. And Christ say, you, I want you to believe and, and you tell people this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It is very important. Christ has made it very clear that the path to heaven is only one road. It is not like going to KLCC, you know, there are many ways to go. No, nope. to heaven, there's only one, that is by Christ. So you have to believe this, and you, whoever you are reaching out to, have to believe it also. And the other thing, in that chapter, he wants us to believe two other things. First, he wants us to believe that the Father and him are one. That means he is just not an ordinary man, but he comes from heaven and he's the son of God. Or else, if you don't believe in that, then believe for the very works itself. That means, in other words, you believe that I am not an ordinary person by the things I'm doing on earth. The way I teach, the way I heal people, the miracles I perform. Through that, you should believe that I am not an ordinary person, but I come from the Father. So believe that He's God and believe that the only way to go to heaven is through Him and no one else. That is a belief. So the belief that you have will create the foundation for every one of you. The foundation that we have must be strong. And if the foundation is shaky, you know, shaky in the sense that if Christ had died, he had not risen again, then people would say, hey, you know, your God is just like any other God because all the other religion, they believe their God, but their God dies. You know, and then the people, they, they go around and they're telling about how their God died for them and then nothing happened. But Christ is different. He died for us, he win the victory, and then he resurrected. So it is very, very different. So the foundation has to be built. So how you build a foundation? By believing the word of God, believing the truth of God. And, the, and there are many things that are written in the Bible. And once your foundation is strong, no one can shake it. No one can destroy it. The only person, the only thing that can destroy is you yourself giving it up. That's it. That means you say, I do not want to believe anymore. The opposite. So always remember that. Huh? Believe. And just now when we talk about affection, affection will allow us, you know, just like Christ said, you know, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. If you love me, you will keep my word. And the negative is say, if you do not love me, then you will not keep my word. So if you if we see ourselves not listening to God's word and being obedient to what he's teaching us, then we know that those moments of our life, we have actually rejected God and we have pushed him away. We are not loving the Lord. That's why we do not obey his word. That's why we do not keep his word and we do not keep his commandment. So this tool itself will help you <clears throat> first believing the foundation that you have, <clears throat> loving the affection will help you to do one thing that is very important in all our life. And that one thing, <clears throat> okay, anyway, before that, belief is from the mind, okay? I read, I know, I acknowledge, it's from my mind and I believe it. So the heart and the mind is on display here, huh? And then the third one we talk about is C. What is C? Care. Okay, care. Command. Care comes under Command. Sorry? Command. Command, okay. Come. Come. Command. Sorry? Come. Come. Comfort. What? Come. Comfort, okay. Okay. All that is actually comes under love, you know, because there are many ways to show love. But huh? because, because of your love and because of your belief, you'll be able to do C. And C is very important because many people cannot continue with C. I've given you the clue and C is carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Keep doing. Keep at it. Because many times, you know, new believers, when they come, they know the Lord, they're very excited. But after one year, two years, they find that 
I don't do it anymore. And sometimes, so always remember, because of our foundation and because of love for Him, we will keep, we will continue or we will keep, we will carry on what we are doing. And here, the Lord has used the word keep and do at the same time. Huh? And this is what is expressed in John <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> 14. Huh? And here, this verse will tell you the five times where he talk about to keep, to do, to keep, to do, to keep, to do. That means whatever he has taught us, whatever he has shown us, we are supposed to do it. And we are supposed to keep doing it. And that is why we have to carry on. So in other words, what Christ is trying to say is, let us start well, but let us finish well. Many a times, you know that we, many Christians, they do not finish well. After a certain number of years, they got distracted. You know, they get uh, mm, diverted. They lose, their, they lose their faith. They get discouraged and all that. So they do not carry on anymore. So remember, carry on, continue. That is why when you all come together, encourage one another, help one another in order to carry on. And stir up the love in one another stir up you know the foundation of what you have the belief that you have as you talk about the lord and keep doing in do in keeping doing what it encompass he says keep my commandment that is keep carry on that means carry on with my commandments carry on with my word that means just keep it don't let it go. Don't lose it. Okay, And also the other one, it is always linked to love. You know? So when you, what, what in the, those four verses, you know, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my word. Keep doing something, carrying on doing for what the Lord is, is linked to how much we love the Lord. So that is why the three words are very important. Love, affection, mm, uh, belief, and carry on. They link together. And the other thing is belief. It also linked to belief. Believe on me, the word that I do, shall he do also. That means, in other words, if you believe in Christ, whatever you see Christ does, or whatever he, has, whatever he teaches, we will also do. So carry on, keep doing it. Huh? And so it links to love and it links to belief. And this is a hand in action. Okay, when you want to do something, you have to use your hand. But of course, the hand may not be so clean as that, you know, because sometimes, uh, the hand after helping out and doing something, uh, our hand will be not like so nicely, uh, <clears throat> manicure. But it should be something like that. That is a hand whereby we are used we will use to serve the Lord. There are times whereby we have to dirty our hand, we will do it, okay? And the other thing that we can do is our feet in action. Going to places, bringing the word to other people, bringing the ministry into other people's lives, telling people our God, who God is. So we have to move from place to place at time. And that's what you are doing now. You know, sometimes you go to this hotel for this the church, and then another hotel for the church. You invite people, you get people to come. Sometimes you go to a place to meet up with certain people and to bring them because they don't know where to go. So these are the feet in action. Mm. And besides that, mm, there are also the mouth in action. These are the three things we can use for the Lord. Our hands, our feet, and our mouth in action. Okay, so this is talking. But all of us know, because we've been Christian long enough, we are matured people. We are not like a kid that's about 12 years old or 15 years old. But we are mature people and we know that this kind of thing can happen. Okay, Always remember, continue. I mean, keep doing even when the going is tough. And I always like to see how ants you know, overcome obstacles. They want to cross from one side to the other side. They know it's impossible for one of them to do it. 
So they began to get help from one another and they link up, they link up, they link up and they're able to cross to the other side. So think of ways, have initiative, be creative, encourage one another, teamwork, and we'll be, we will be able to continue doing things when the going is tough. Okay? And this is what life is all about. So remember, all of us, we need one another. It is not something that I can do alone. And when you find someone who is very good, do not be upset or jealous of the person or be envious of the person. Help the person to be successful. If the person is better than you, don't be afraid, but just tell the Lord, you know, God, I'm so happy, you know, that you brought someone even better than myself. And now we're going to share <clears throat> our ability to make your ministry even more successful. And when the person goes even better, give him credit, give her credit, be happy for her. Because by doing so, you will learn much from her. So that in the work of in the ministry of God, there should be not, there should no, there should not be jealousy or envy, just like in the secular world. But we make one another successful. So in short, mm, Always remember this, huh? Mm. Remember, we will continue. Let us keep doing, even when the going is tough, because we believe in its truth, and we do this with affection, with love. So your belief and your love for the Lord will con will carry you in the ministry that you are doing for Him not only for this year or the next two, three years, but for the many, many, many years to come. So just have remember that. Huh? And the closing thing is, I just want you to give thought about this. And if you have nothing to share after this, maybe I'd like, to, like you to share your thoughts on this question. How is my belief in God's teaching and love for Him important in keeping me faithful in my ministry for him, for the Lord. Okay? So give thought to it and always remember that any time when you feel a bit discouraged, pick up the phone, talk to someone in gospel life, a Christian fellowship, get encouragement from her. Anytime when you're discouraged or having difficulty, open up the word of God and look at what you can learn from, from his word and strengthen your belief in Him. And every time when you're discouraged, always remember the power that's going to propel you is going to be love. You see, some people, you know, they go onto a boat, a very nice boat, you know, and they go onto the boat and the boat is a foundation. So you're not sinking in the water, but you stay in the boat. But then the boat, without a propeller, it will, move, it will not move anywhere. And love is like propeller that moves the boat. So the belief is a foundation, like a boat. The propeller okay. is like love, whereby when you have that love, it propels and brings you from place to place. And you can continue going from place to place for the Lord in the, in the days of your life. Okay. So when you think about that, we just close in a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for teaching us how we can sustain our ministry for you. Having a strong belief that it will create a foundation and being able to do all the things that you ask us to do with love and with the joy of the Lord, which is going to be our strength to move from day to day. Yes, we have gone through difficult moments in life and especially the last three years have not been easy, but each difficulty has taught us many new lessons. He has taught us many character quality that we should adopt, and it has reminded us how we should that how we need to depend upon you. Because if we don't depend upon you and we depend upon ourselves, then we find that in, in no time we will lose steam in wanting to serve you and wanting to do your bidding. So we thank you for your the lesson in which you teach us, and before you depart from this earth, you have taught the, the apostles and they have done well when you left the earth. 
And we pray, Father, that as we listen to your word, we will also do well in the days ahead of our life. Thank you, Father, for teaching us again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.